Hi, and welcome to Mental Matters on Open Studio. Uh, this is Cape Town TV. Today, I have uh, two guests that I'll be talking to about anxiety. Please introduce yourselves to my audience today. Hi, I'm Gugu. And I'm Monique. Hi, Gugu and Monique, and welcome. Um, just tell me a little bit about anxiety. What has, what has that journey been like, and what is that thing that we call anxiety? Anxiety is an emotion that goes through you and it's very drastic. For me, it gets drastic. Um, thoughts running through my mind, I start shaking and heart palpitation, I start sweating or tears going through my eyes. And it's just, it is a terrible feeling, but then there are some, there is some help there to help you deal with it. So yeah, it's quite drastic. Monique, what's it been like for you? Um, I would say it's been quite paralyzing, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a lifelong struggle, um, but I'm learning to, to live with it and deal with it. Um, it's, it's something I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. And so uh, t take me through that process, the moment that it, it sets in and it comes. Is it something that I, as a person that's sitting here, could notice going through you? Um, it would, I think it starts internally and it just grows and grows and grows. So for me it starts with um, like a really, my heart starts going, I can't breathe properly, my thoughts start racing, um, I can't think clearly, um, I shake and usually I would just get up and, and go or run and flee. Um, so I think you probably would be able to see it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, uh, you know, I'm quite, you know, I've, I've had friends say, you know, I'm quite tense. So they do see it, and people okay. do see it. Yeah. And quickly, does it manifest in the same way? Yeah, it's exactly the same way where it starts internally, but then I would like start getting fidgety or just mumble my words when I speak. Then I just get up and go and like go to the bathroom, splash myself with water on my face, or yeah, yeah, I can ask for help even if, if I can. So yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'm going to ask you this separately. Um, at what age were you when it was first diagnosed? Uh, for me, I was first diagnosed at 13. It was um, at the same time I was diagnosed with depression. Um, and it was quite a relief to know that there was a name for what, what I was going through, that I wasn't just crazy. Um, at the time, I, you know, the, this, there was a lot of stigma. I was quite young and didn't really want to take medication. But my doctor at the time said, you know, if, if, if you had diabetes, you'd take uh, medication for that. So this is the same kind of thing, which made it a lot easier for me to accept. Mm. For me, I was about 22, but I feel like I've struggled with it all my life. I just didn't know what it is. But then I was just fortunate enough to see a psychiatrist and to get help and to get the meds to actually know what it is that I'm going through and what it is that I can deal with and I can get help from. So, yeah. How has that journey been? Um, stepping into that courage of, I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to go and see a professional and I'm going to attack it head on. What has it done for you? as a person that continues to, to battle the illness, Monique? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a lifelong struggle, as I said, and it's been quite difficult. Um, getting that courage up was, was very hard, but today it's become part of my life, and it's, I know what to do. I know that I need to see a psychiatrist when I'm feeling this way, or to prevent me from feeling that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has been difficult in the beginning, um, like, having the courage, struggling to have the courage or to step up. But then it get to a point where, okay, no, actually there's nothing to be ashamed of. You just like ask for help. There mm -hmm. is something there, just go for it. And yeah, like she said, it's becomes a part of you and it's okay to deal with it and to work through it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. What's been the toughest thing, say in the workplace, having people actually understand that this is, this is Monique or this is Google uh, and this is the illness that they have, or do people at work know? Is that, is that a, how's that journey been? Um, people at my workplace do know, and they're very supportive. I'm very lucky um, in that regard. So they do understand, they do support me, um, uh, and, and, and they help me. They, they, if they said, you know, if this is too much, you say it, and, and we'll, we can, we'll help you. And that's been really helpful. I've been very lucky in that regard. Um, and, and for in most of my career, with, uh, in most of my jobs, people have been quite supportive. Even if they didn't understand it, they've been quite supportive. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, with me, um, I struggled in the beginning to like open up and I struggled to open up, but then it gets to a point where my w- I started slacking at work or anything like that, but then I just, okay, like I'm struggling with this. This is what I'm going through, actually, like mental illness. So, yeah. And um, they've been supportive and been helpful. And yeah, it's been a great experience as well. Couldn't have been easy stepping out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel more and more people are beginning to understand anxiety or do they still feel that, oh, you're weird and this is, you just, just get over yourself and just get with the program? Um, I'm very fortunate in that I have a community of friends that really do understand and really do support me. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, my, my circle, like, uh, you know, it's quite diverse and people are just really lovely and, and supportive. So I think there is a growing understanding that mental illness is an illness. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not just um, you're crazy or there's something wrong with you. Um, people are very supportive, I've been finding. Yeah, with me, it, in the beginning, it wasn't that easy. In the beginning, they weren't that supportive. But um, I think, yeah, they're growing in understanding and they understand and they have that knowledge, okay, yeah, this is a real thing and you can, you struggle with it and it's fine. We're here for you and we're here to support you. Yeah. That's great. Um, in, your, in your social circles, um, say, for example, I'm, I'm trying to understand how the meds work. Um, do you, do you take the, the a pill when the when when the anxiety is coming on, or is it something that you take uh, regularly at a certain time, or is there a calming tablet, or how does the medication work? Um, my medication I, t- I take uh, on a daily basis uh, just to try and because I have a panic disorder um, and obviously anxiety on top of that, so just to try and manage that. Um, when you know the anxiety does. Um, Overcome, uh, uh, overpower that medication. I do have other tools that I use. Okay. Um, but it's n- non-medicinal. Oh, we'll get into that yeah. in, in, a, in a future section in, on this particular program. And Kuku, uh, is, is, your, is your medication regimen the same? Yeah, with me, I take it on a daily basis, like in the morning. But then, like she said, I also have non-medicinal stuff that I use, like meditation or anything like that. Oh, that fantastic! Really helps. We'll get into that in the next in the next segment. Um, There you have it. We're talking about anxiety and uh, dealing with it. Um, My guest today, I'm talking to wonderful people, Monique and Gugu. And uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking about the different types of stigma that uh, people with mental health illness are facing, or people in particular, anxiety on this show. So uh, I'll see you just on the other side of this break. Welcome back. It's Mental Matters on Open Studio. Uh, We're talking about anxiety today, and uh, I just want to find out now stigma, which is uh, a big conversation which the world over is having around issues of mental health. So in anxiety, what are the sort of stigmas that you have faced? Gugu, what, what, what are the stigmas that you, you, that you have faced as, uh, as a person, workplace, outside? Maybe family, extended family? Uh, stigmas on my face, it's like, okay, um, you're just being dramatic, or what, what are you, or you're seeking for attention, or something like that, or you're just being over dramatic, or anything like that. But in the workplace as well, I have gone through some stigmas as well, but I think as time went by and the knowledge has grown with them, they've got to, to understand it. So, yeah, it yeah. has helped a lot with me. Yes. Monique, what are the stigmas that you feel people still have around anxiety? Um, I think people really don't understand it. Uh, for me, and it, it's, it's not even about the anxiety itself, it's about the, the behaviours around it. So for me it was, uh, I, couldn't, I, I, I couldn't attend events. Something inside of me just said, I can't, I can't go, I, I, I can't do it. I, I would not go to friends or I'd try and go to uh, an, an event or a social occasion and I would just have to leave because I felt so uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just wanted to rip my skin off as how I felt inside. The anxiety was so strong. Uh, I got to a point where I couldn't leave the house and people didn't understand that. And again, they were like, oh, are you being dramatic or you just need to try harder. And it was really, that was so hard because no one understood it. Um, I didn't really understand it myself. I knew it was that my anxiety, but I didn't know how to stop it at that point. Do you find, uh, um 
it strains, those kind of stigmas strain relationships with people, not necessarily romantic, but just relationships with people that you might necessarily care about, but they don't understand you. As, has that put a strain? Definitely. I, I've, I have lost friends um, because of it. They have said, you know, it was a lot when I was younger, uh, more than, than now, but they've said, no, we don't want to deal with it. We've, we've had enough of this. Um, because it, I have to deal with it on a daily basis, or and they don't—they they want me to get better and get over it, mm -hmm. and um, I can't. Unfortunately, this is what I'm—I'm I'm living with. I, mm -hmm. This is this is what I deal with for, on a daily basis and, and for my whole entire life. Um, so it has put that strain on, and people get frustrated when I don't attend. Or, or you, in the past, they, when I wouldn't attend events or uh, would leave, um, so it definitely did put a strain on it. Um, but fortunately, I've got a support network at the moment that really does understand. I'm happy, but I'm happy to hear that. Gugu, do you feel the workplace is doing enough for people that um, have the, the condition that you have? Not necessarily your employer, but um, the workplace in, in general, as a person that, 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 that battles uh, the issue of anxiety, do you feel that uh, there are things in place that assist people with your condition? You know, I think, yeah, in times times gone by, I think they have campaigns or something like that on mental orders with disabilities and stuff like that. So, like, yeah, it is growing in the workplace where the awareness is there and people are, n are knowing about it and there is knowledge about it and they're gaining knowledge about it. So, yeah, I think as time went by, there is, like, like campaigns and stuff where they talk about it, they have seminars and all that so people can understand what mm. exactly it is. Yeah. Have you had a situation where you, um, where you had to stand in a room and come out to a person and say, by the way, this is what I have, I have anxiety and it's not a phase, and it's something that I've had for a long time and it's not being weird. Have you had a, did you ever have a moment like that with, with somebody? I think with me, when I had a job interview, I was like, okay, this is a challenge that I've went through in life and I'm dealing with, I'm currently dealing with, so yeah, I had to actually come out and step out in the past. Did you feel that they understood? Because um, one of the, the, when I first heard about anxiety, uh, as a person who also battles mental illness, uh, I didn't understand it. I thought, oh, I thought anxiety was like a fight or fright situation that happens mm -hmm. If I see a lion and I want to run away, you know, but um, when I realized that it was also a mental condition, it took me a while to kind of start understanding it until it, it got it, it, it got explained to me and, and how it works, um, not in the great detail that you have. So what is it that you want people to know that they, they, they misunderstand about anxiety? A person that's probably watching the show right now that uh, has gone maybe has got maybe a friend or a son or f uh, any other family member who's going through uh, a similar thing what is it that you'd like them to, to to know that can help the person that's going through that similar um, illness I think for them to know that it is nothing to be ashamed of and it's okay to go through what you're going through now and to know, for them to know that you're not alone mm -hmm. and that there is help out there and that you can deal with this on a daily basis. Yes, it's difficult, yes, it's challenging, but like as time goes by, you will get through it and you you will, you can get help and it's okay. Like mm -hmm. just reach out and get help and everything will be all right. Uh, yeah. yeah, for the, the friends and family of, of those people, I would also just say be patient. Um, learn more about uh, the illness. Um, it, it, it is difficult and it is frustrating, um, but just, just try and be patient with the person and um, as compassionate as you possibly can. Um, and, and, and to also realize, you know, it's, it's not being overreact overreacting or being dramatic like Gugu said. It's, it's a real thing uh, that the person is experiencing um, and can't shut off. It's not something that a person can shut off. If you're sitting at home and you're wondering um, how you can get help, either for yourself or somebody else, uh, there are a lot of uh, organizations that uh, can assist you. One of the ways that uh, you can connect to those uh, organizations, you can actually email us. 
on mentalmatters at gmail, mentalmatterscourage at gmail.com. And we would be happy, uh, even through our Facebook page, which uh, is showing on the screen right now, um, which would show you, um, we could point you to the, to the right places where you can go and get the kind of help that you need. And we can um, give, uh, point you to the, the people that can give you the proper advice uh, that can help you deal with it. Um, it's amazing that uh, we've come such a, a long way from not understanding issues of mental health uh, to points where we actually can have a show about it and have amazing people that come and help guide us through it and to understand it. So remember the email address is mentalmatterscourage at gmail.com and uh, we shall be back on the other side uh, with more uh, and that's going to that's gonna be about hacks and ways that uh, my guests cope and uh, how you can cope as well with it. Welcome back. Uh, the show is Mental Matters and we're an open studio with Cape Town TV. We are in the segment where we talk about hacks and superpowers that you might feel you have. I'll explain that superpowers bit. Uh, superpowers are things that you feel uh, you've gained over time in dealing with your mental illness and things that help you cope and help you carry on going uh, even though you're battling with the illness. What has been your hack? that has worked for you as a person that has an anxiety? Mm. What is it that you, you do that makes you feel like you can cope? Mm. Um, you talked about your non-medicinal ways that you're mm. able to cope with anxiety. Yes. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so I try stuff like meditation where I just listen to music or I listen to calming music. Mm -hmm. I also do gym as well, like working out, oh just nice. freeing myself, freeing the stress and then some of the anxiety. So yeah, that those do help as well and just, Maybe hang out with friends as well, like just talking about it, having a conversation about it, and like being free and having that conversation. So that those do help a lot. Fantastic. Yeah, Exercise, um, music, yeah. meditation. That's a, that's a lot of, uh, of stuff that you do, yeah. and I'm glad that it, it is actually working. Yeah. Um, uh, Monique, um, I also uh, use meditation. I run. Uh, which has been amazing. I love running off my anxiety. It's, it's been the best tool I've discovered. Um, I also drink a lot of chamomile tea uh, <laughs> when, I, when I'm starting to feel anxious. Um, also just trying to soothe myself um, it's, and it's, you know, treat myself kindly. Um, I also listen to binaural beats, which has been also a real game changer for me, um, especially when I'm at work. Mm -hmm. Helps me just to calm and focus, um, and it's been incredible. Uh, can you just describe binaural beats? I've, I've heard it uh, before, but I've, I've only used it in the creative world when it comes to learning your lines and all that sort of stuff. How does it work for anxiety? Um, so similarly, a, a, a few years ago, there used to be those ads on TV for um, binaural beats that, that, that you know, help you focus and, and, and concentrate. Mm -hmm. And um, I discovered these in completely by mistake. Um, they're on YouTube. Yes. And, uh, or you can get some apps for them. Um, basically, it's this sound that is on a certain frequency, um, I think that's alpha, delta, beta, and theta. Mm -hmm. I think there might be a few more, um, which do different things to your brain waves. And um, I, I, f I found that listening to them, um, you know, sometimes you can just listen to them straight or they can be covered with um, calming music or even um, uh, affirmations that are sub like subliminal affirmations. Um, and I found that has been really helpful. Um, it's, it's a strange sound, it's a stra but it, it's, it's been one of the best hacks that I've found. <laughs> Gugu, um, do you feel you have a, a superpower as a person that has um, that anxiety? What, what other aspect of your personality and of your person has come out more pronounced positively as a person that has anxiety that maybe the average person might not readily have? I think for me it's empathy. Empathy. You know, yeah, just putting yourself in others and someone else's shoes and realizing what they're going through I think with compassion as well mm -hmm. with a bit of kindness as well with like what just being joyful towards other people I think those really do help with me that's fantastic and does your work require a lot of uh, empathy yeah 
lot. Yes, I deal with people and papers, so yeah. <laughs> people and papers. <laughs> that, that's quite a combination. <laughs> Monique, what's your yeah. superpower? Uh, my superpower is uh, also, um, I relate a lot to Google, but also um, hyper awareness um, and attention to detail. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's, uh, which has also helped me in, in my workplace. Um, you're the person I would want on my team. <laughs> Attention to detail. Um, you know, I would want you on my side all the time. Uh, and I think that I think those are good qualities to have because sometimes we forget that uh, for every reaction there is an opposite reaction. And I think it's it's, it's good to realize that yes, there is anxiety, uh, but also with it comes the other side of, of I'm coming over on the other side of anxiety. And I'm starting to to find my rhythm, and in this rhythm, I find the the, the redemptive things about having this this um, illness. W is there anything else that uh, you'd like to uh, to tell us that you feel people misunderstand about this illness, anxiety? Does it get mistaken for other mental illnesses? Is it something that um, that, that you feel can be easily misdiagnosed, perhaps? Um, sure. <laughs> I think it, it possibly could. Uh, mm. You know, I, I get quite paranoid, so that, that might be um, mistaken. Um, and, and, and as Google said previously, you know, people think I'm being dramatic mm. and um, don't really understand what is exactly going on uh, with me. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's understandable. Yeah, I think with me, maybe I tend to get too quiet or something. They're like, oh, what are you so sad or what's going on? You're depressed or anything. And they like think it's depression. Yeah. Okay. But then there is quite a lot of stuff also that happens to me, like with the anxiety as well. But then I think it's just with the awareness as well, just letting people know, okay, this is what it is. This is mental illness. And I'm actually not ashamed of it. Okay. Yeah. I think that's the key thing. Uh, one of the things that, 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 that um, is fascinating about today's world is uh, we can come out with our mental illnesses and sit on a, on a TV show like this and openly talk about it without uh, having the risk of getting stoned by people when we go outside and have, this convers and have these conversations freely. And I think this is one of the gifts that, um, that living and the time that we live in has, has given us and to be able to connect with a lot of people. So if you're at home and you'd like to, to, to speak to us about um, your issues of mental illness, uh, specifically today we're talking about, uh, specifically today we're talking about anxiety. Uh, if you'd like to write to us and you'd like to get involved with us um, uh, on this show and, and, and help us and tell us about your hacks maybe, uh, you can email us. And the email address is mentalmatterscourage at gmail.com and uh, the other thing is you can also follow us um, on our Facebook page, you can like our, our Facebook page and uh, there you will find some resources uh, and we'll give you information on people and organizations that you can connect with that can help you uh, find your rhythm back and help you deal with anxiety, help people in your life that uh, you know require the kind of assistance and we can point you in the right direction. I'm really thankful to you guys. Thank you for stepping out into courage and coming to talk about your anxiety and uh, being able to, to, to step out. It's not an easy feat stepping out and doing this. Uh, thank you to all of you at home. Uh, the show has been Mental Matters and it's on Open Studio, Cape Town TV. Until next time, bye.